Welcome back to Honest News. I'd like to follow in the reading of God's Word. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 33. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. God is not the author of confusion. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for peace. A peace that surpasses all understanding. We thank you, Lord, for order. We thank you for that which is right, that which is straight and narrow. We thank you, Lord, for keeping us on the straight and narrow. Help us to keep our minds stayed upon you, that we may be kept in perfect peace. We plead the blood of Jesus as we minister your word, Lord. We pray, God, for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Destroy the yoke, Lord, that this gospel would shine into the hearts of those that are listening. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God is not the source or the origin of confusion. It does not originate with him. He's not the author of it. Wherever there's confusion, God is not in control. You hear what I said? The Lord is not in charge where there's confusion. So if there is not peace, quietness, peace, rest, and something else is at work. Amen. That's individually, collectively. If for some reason there's something disturbing the peace, the Lord's not the author of that. Now, that doesn't mean that God doesn't send confusion. Or allow confusion. He'll allow it. If we don't want peace, if we don't desire peace, he'll let confusion come in place of peace. He'll give us what we want. If we'd rather have confusion, the Lord, the Lord will accommodate. And that's exactly what Babylon means. The world is... Preparing for Babylon. Amen. Confusion is where the devil is at work, where the flesh is at work. That's where confusion is found. Right? When things are not clear, when things don't make sense, that's where the devil is at work. Because even if we don't understand something in truth, even if we don't understand something about God or his will, that's still not confusion. Right? Confusion comes from hypocrisy. You say one thing and do another. Right? You say you're going to do something and you don't do it. That's where confusion comes from. So it stems from, from hypocrisy. 
That's why confusion can never come from the Lord because he's not a hypocrite. He says, and he does what he says he's going to do. Amen. The Lord never says something and doesn't do what he says he's going to do. Now, he can change his mind, but he will make it clear that he's changed his mind before he does something different than he says he's going to do. Amen. But again, confusion comes from hypocrisy. Doesn't it confuse you when somebody says something, but then they don't do what they say they're going to do? Amen. And that's where a lot of uh, confusion comes from. Out of the hypocrisy of parents that raise their children saying one thing and doing another. Amen. That child is raised with confusion. Mom and dad said not to do this, but they do it. That brings confusion. Amen. When we uh, tell our children that this is for adults, and yet they know in their own hearts, they know at their young age that's not right. So we teach the young people, if you're an adult, you can be a sinner. Yeah. If you're an adult, you can do sinful things. You can do immoral things as long as you're an adult. So then they start saying, oh, well, I can't wait till I'm an adult so I can do those things. That's confusion. Amen? How many know the parents outside of the marriage bed, the parents should not be doing something children, children don't do? You know what I mean. There shouldn't be, this is adults. You know what I'm saying. There shouldn't be different ratings on entertainment or movies. You know what I'm saying. There shouldn't be. If it's not something that a child can look at, then parents have no business looking at it. That's, see, that's confusion. That brings confusion. James chapter 3, in verse 16. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion, and every evil work. Amen? We recently had someone working with us, told us they were going to do something, they didn't do it. They called back to try to make it right, and I says, at this point, I'm confused. Are you listening, people? I didn't want to work with that person anymore. They left the situation worse than it was before, I, before they came to, the, uh, to do something. So they, they, left, they left the situation worse than when they found it. And then they try to call up and say they're going to make it right or they don't want to lose their money so they can finish the job. Well, they've already left it a mess, walked out, not going to finish the job, but now they want to finish because they want their money, and all they did was confuse me. And the scripture says there's every evil work. I don't want that under my roof. Amen. I don't want that under my roof. It's hard to find an honest, professional person in these days. Somebody that really does care about their workmanship. That really cares about the people. They're not just trying to make a dollar or trying to look at the bottom line. But they really care about people. You can't find that anymore today. It's almost impossible. And really... There comes a time when that should be only found amongst the saints. The saints should be different. Amen. 
It should come to the place to where the world even turns to the saints when they want to get something done right. Yeah. Sad, but we're at that place, people, where can you even rely upon someone that says they love Jesus? Someone that says they're a Christian, can you rely on them? Can you can you believe that they're actually going to do what they say they're going to do? That's called integrity. That's called character. Amen? Now, I hear them saying that Donald Trump is doing everything he said he was going to do. No, he's not. No, he's not. There's a couple of real major things he hasn't even touched. Major things that he's done nothing about. All I've really seen him do is make it better for the rich. You know, really, seriously. I haven't seen him do anything for the middle class or the poor. Nothing. Everything he's doing helping Israel, doing all this stuff. None of it's helping the middle class or the poor. It's hypocrisy. It's confusion. And if you follow it to its end, you'll find that every evil work is there. Amen? Every evil work. So this wisdom, according to the scripture descendeth from above. Is that what it says? No. It says, this wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthy, sensual, and devilish. Wherever this wisdom that descendeth from the bottomless pit, this wisdom that comes from below, there's going to be confusion. Because where this devilish wisdom is, there's hypocrisy. That's the last thing that I would like to be called. I don't want anybody to look at me and say, that's a hypocrite. I don't want to ever be called a hypocrite. Amen. I'd rather have someone say I was arrogant to say that I was a hypocrite. To say that you say, but you don't do what you say you're going to do. I want to be a person of my word. And that takes integrity, people. That's character. And it's not always easy to do what you say you're going to do. That's why it's probably better not to say you're going to do something. It's better just to do it than to say you're going to do it. Amen because you may not do it. But if you open your mouth and tell everybody you're going to do it, and then you don't do it, they can hold you to that. Amen. See, that's where quietness comes in. Just keep it to yourself, and when you do it, people will recognize you did it. But if you say you're going to do something, you know, I've had over the years, I've even had my children they 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 really long for for daddy to uh to promise them something promise dad promise especially when they were really really younger little little girls they promise do you promise daddy do you promise i could i never promised them a thing and i would tell them that i'd say i'm not promising you why would i not promise them the only one that has a right to promise is the Father, is God, is, is, I should say, the Father, Son, the Holy Ghost. But only God has a right to promise. Because only God is able to perform what he promises with no failure. You and I fail. We fall short. How many times you've promised something and you didn't make good on your promise? How many times has that happened to you? 
And that brings confusion. That brings confusion. We've got to be people that do. And if we say something, to do what we say. But we better off not saying anything. Amen? Especially not promising. We've had politicians all down through the years that have promised all kinds of things. Amen. Never delivered. That's what a politician does. But see, we were told that Donald Trump wasn't a politician. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's one of the best politicians. They say, but they not do. My pastor used to say years ago, he'd say, don't, don't watch what they say. Don't listen to what they say. He said, watch what they do. Amen. Watch what they do. Because what somebody does, that's who they are. Amen. That's who they are. So I could care less what people have to say. Show me by your action. Amen. Don't just be a talker, but be a doer. Because it only brings confusion. And the Lord is not the author of confusion. We can bring confusion when we promise and don't make good on our promise. We can bring confusion when we say something and do the opposite. When our testimony is contradicting. When our actions and our words contradict. There should never be a contradiction between our words and our actions. That is confusion. In my opinion, confusion is going in circles. You're not getting anywhere. You're not making any progress. Isn't it interesting how the world loves circles, how they love to go in spiral? They love spirals and circles and just, they love it. They love going around and around and around. I had this person that I was dealing with years ago and I couldn't understand what their problem was. And the Lord gave me a quick vision and I saw them on a miracle round as an adult. And they didn't want to get off. You know those little miracle rounds in the playground? You spin it around while they're on it. They didn't want to get off. And they're an adult. Amen. And there are people like that that just want to have fun. They just they don't want to be responsible. Amen. They don't want to be an adult. You know the old song there. I'm a Toys R Us kid. Huh? There's a lot of adults. Even Paul said it. He said, when I became a man, I put away childish things. Right? When I became a man, I put away childish things. Did he put away the childish things before he became a man? No. When he became a man, he put away childish things. That's when we will put away childish things. That's why it's so important that we mature, that we grow up, so that we have the wherewithal to put away childishness, child ways, childish ways, and confusion, hypocrisy and confusion. Amen. Last but not least, Revelation the 18th chapter and verse 2. 
And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils. And the hold of every foul spirit, in a cage of every unclean, hateful bird. That word fallen doesn't mean that it's being destroyed. It means to light upon. See, principalities, wicked spirits, and high places, when the devil is cast down to the earth, and he knows he has a short time, Babylon will come down with him. Are you listening? That great city, Babylon, that spiritual city, amen, is going to come down upon the earth. That's why it says here, it's become the habitation of devils, the hold of every foul spirit, and the cage of every unclean, hateful bird. That doesn't mean it's not going to manifest in a physical kingdom, Babylon, but it's a spiritual city. Are you listening? And what effect is this spiritual city, Babylon, which means confusion, what effect is it going to have upon the world? For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And this is spiritual fornication, not just physical. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth have waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. You listening? The bride will be long gone before this happens and possibly even the church will be gone. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins and that you receive not of her plagues. There's still going to be some of God's people on the earth when Babylon has fallen upon this earth, when it lights down upon the earth, Satan is going to come down to the earth having great wrath. He knows he has a short time. For her sins, listen to this, for her sins have reached unto heaven and God hath remembered her iniquities. This is the city of confusion. Babylon. Babylon the Great. The mother of harlots. Amen? Uh, Like I was saying, it will materialize into physical into the physical, but it is a spiritual city that's coming down. Amen? Just as the new Jerusalem is going to come down from God out of heaven, so the city of Babylon, the principalities, wicked spirits, and high places is going to come and light down upon this earth. Amen? Amen? And it's going to take over the whole earth, the whole world. Confusion, wisdom that comes from below, devilish, earthy, sensual. Amen. The whole world is going to be given over to this wisdom that comes from hell. Amen going to be hell on earth, people. That's what it's going to be. It's going to be hell on earth. Amen. Blessed be his holy name. God 
is calling us. He's calling us. Come out. To come out of the lukewarmness in this hour. Come away. Amen? We see in Song of Solomon, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. Come out of her. Come away. Amen. But long before, the message says, Come out of her, my people, speaking of Babylon. The message in Song of Solomon is, Come away. Rise up and come away. Amen. That's what the Lord is saying to his bride right now. Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. Amen. Glory to his name. Come away. Leave this world behind. Amen. Leave this world behind. Don't look back. Glory to his name. I was thinking the other day, that word the Lord gave to me when I saw a nuclear weapon being detonated in the United States. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked, but it shall not come nigh thee. And I thought about Abraham. He saw the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah with his eyes. But it didn't come nigh him. Amen. Didn't come near him. And even Lot escaped. He saw the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. He saw the brimstone in fire. Amen. But it didn't come nigh him. That's a type of the church. Lot is a type of the church. Abraham's a type of the bride. Amen? Abraham prayed for Lot. He interceded for Lot. He drew near to God when God was about to judge Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham was drawing near to God. Even though God was angry, full of anger, and wrath towards Sodom and Gomorrah, and Abraham drew near to God. How many of you would draw near to God if he was angry? Amen. We know Abraham said to God, he says, be not angry. I'll ask you this one more time. And he was asking God to spare the city. And God's anger was waxing hotter and hotter. You know, just like an old diesel engine. Once it passes a certain place, I remember my pastor was in the building one, t- one time and he had the old diesel engine on the bus running. He had been working on it and he went inside for a few minutes. I believe he went inside. And I saw him come running. And I was wondering, what is he running for? You know, you don't usually see your pastor running. And he was running. Because he knew that if a diesel engine gets to a certain place, you can't bring it back. You can't bring it down. There's no control over it. And he started hearing that diesel engine started racing. And that's the way God's wrath is. That's the way God's anger is. As we get closer and closer, you're not going to turn his wrath back. Nobody's going to change God's mind. You get to a certain point, people, where the sins have reached to heaven. God hath remembered our iniquities. 
Amen. That's why we see in Song of Solomon also it says, wake, don't wake him up. Let him sleep. Don't wake up the wrath of God. Amen. Glory to his name. Let's not be those in this hour that are helping to make God angry. Amen. Glory to his name. Let's be those like Abraham saying to God, be not angry. I'll ask you something. Let me ask you one more thing. Hallelujah. 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 God, will you spare America? Will you spare them if there's if there's a few righteous? Praise the Lord, people. Where are we in all of this? Where are we? Are we interceding? Are we standing between America and the Lord? If you're from another country, are you standing in the gap for that country? I'll be honest with you, I have not faithfully been standing in the gap. I have not faithfully been interceding for this country. I'm going to admit that. Have you? Have you faithfully been standing in the gap? Making up the hedge? How many really have a desire? Is there a desire in your heart to intercede for America? How about interceding for the church? For Lot? Amen? Hallelujah. Let's not be part of the confusion. Let's not be part of the confusion, people. Amen. Let's mean what we say and say what we mean. Let's be people of integrity, character, honest, sincere, truthful. Hallelujah. Let's not be hypocrites. Amen.